I'm here at HPE Discover in Madrid with Craig Partridge, and supply chain is something that is kind of being talked about a lot all over the show. And digital and supply chain together, uh, what, what exactly does that mean? Yeah, because they're one of the most overused terms in the industry right now. Everything is digital, right? So I think we've given some real definition to the term digital. I think digital is really marked out in a couple of very distinct ways. So first of all, digital is really dealing with the huge amounts of data that we're about to generate, not just as an industry, but as a, as a world. As we connect the world around us and as we sense new things, we're generating huge volumes of data. And actually the digital agenda is, if anything, it's about being able to understand that data and interpret that data. And you know, for commercial customers, being able to monetize that data or being able to redefine the market that they operate in. The second thing that marks out digital is that it's really an edge in uh, movement. So as we've gone through the era of cloud, we've concerned ourselves with huge hyperscale environments, massive consolidation, and shifted the focus towards IT being a service that you consume. As we move into digital, we're really looking at how we then redistribute that experience back to the edge. So it's, it's really important to pivot when we look at digital. It's, it's really around data, manipulation of data, understanding of data. But the second thing is that it's, it's really about that edge in driven experience that then consumes that core supply chain. So they're really connected. You asked the question about the supply chain. The supply chain is how we actually connect the systems and the services which couple together to provide that new edge experience. Uh, and our, our view is that as customers are making that journey and reassembling that supply chain, that there's really kind of four major initiatives that they're undertaking to make that happen. So, so, so what are those? Yeah, so I'll happily explain that. So, so the first one is really dealing with their technical debt because I think when we talk about digital, sometimes we get lost in looking at digital startups, right? Customers that have got no technical debt, no legacy, emerge in a, in a cloud-only world and, and, and kind of disrupt markets with new business models. But in actual fact, digital disruption can be enabled through what, what it is customers have today, their corporate intelligence and insights they have today. In other words, if you're a company that's been around for 20 years, you've got 20 years of experience about knowing your customer, your marketplace, your supply chain, your pricing models. All of this is unique to you. All of this is information that frankly can't be bought. It has to be earned through that, through that 20 years. So we're looking at the first journey being really about modernizing how you extract that corporate intelligence and connect it into these new experiences at the edge. Uh, and that might mean shifting legacy transactional systems that have poor response times into new in-memory architectures that give greater speed uh, to access to that corporate information. Uh, and customers are constantly shifting on that modernization journey and we know that. Sometimes it's driven by workloads, other times it's driven by new technology innovations. Um, but that modernization journey is really key because that's what brings your corporate intelligence to bear. So, so that you've eliminated technical debt, what are the other three journeys? All right, so the second, the second one is really customers stepping into a new pace of change. So it's about velocity. And so we call that second journey accelerating innovation. And that's where customers are really pivoting hard. In fact, that's where we see greater traction with lines of businesses that are looking to use technology to quickly turn an idea into value. And so you see the rise of agile practices. You'll see the rise of customers developing continuous deployment pipelines, looking to get uh, smaller chunks of code and quicker update times so that they can constantly refine and refine and refine the edge much more quickly. So that, that second one is really dealing with the pace of innovation. It's how do, I, how do I get my developers to be able to extract an idea from the business and push it to the market quicker and continually update that. So again, cloud native architectures, the shift to microservices, that whole space is really opening up and, and is creating kind of huge traction with lines of businesses. So the third one, uh, you know, we talked about data being the driver behind that digital economy. I think for many of our customers, the biggest barrier to that is a concern around security. Um, because frankly, now they're dealing with unexpected volumes at the edge, a huge ver velocity of, of, of interactions at the edge now and they need to protect that interaction. And then we're looking back at distributing data from the core out to the cloud as we do greater insights and analytics on that data. And again, protecting the corporate IP in that space is really key. So you know, we did a survey of buying uh, personas within customers. Security came out as the number one concern as they make this pivot. How do they secure the experience? How do they secure the data? Actually, how do they secure their brand reputation? And that's what it's really about. I mean, we've seen recent examples, haven't we, of major companies, major brands, you know, being vulnerable to those threats, and, and that's hugely damaging. So, so we can understand why security is, is really important. So that's the third one. And then closing out on the, on the fourth one, if the other three really are more technology-driven, 
The fourth one is really more cultural and more about people and skills and governance and so like a mindset shift? Right, it is a mindset mindset shift, absolutely. And and it's more than that because I think people's behavior in organizations, the culture, is very much driven by metrics and how you goal that behavior. So if you want to get from monolithic applications with long development cycles, with projects that take six to 12 to two years to implement, and you want to shift that culture to, I want agility, I want speed, I want minimum viable product to hit the market as quickly as possible, you actually have to goal that differently. You have to drive the metrics differently. So instead of instead of measuring things like utilization and capacity, right, those things that have always occupied us in IT for years, the measure now needs to be how quickly can I get uh, through a collaborative team, how can I get an idea through that team so that I can create a minimum viable product? And then I can go on to refine, it's a feedback loop. So you need to change not just skills and practices and culture, but drive that through the way that you measure value in that system as well. So along those four journeys, how is, how is HPE helping customers out with that process? Or, well, I, or all four of those processes? Yeah, I, you, I mean, you know, you're lucky enough that's in my wheelhouse, because I. so I'm from Point Next. So our, our whole mantra is that we, we drive with advisory-led uh, motion to the customer. So what we're really helping them to do is to set that strategy, that digital framework that allows them to explore the opportunity that digital presents. How do they leverage technology to maybe change their market norm, uh, really a board level conversation through to how do they leverage technology to change the productivity within a line of business, through how do they reassemble the infrastructure that makes all of that, all of that magic happen. So we can be there to set the advisory stage. In fact, we are demonstrating our digital transformation workshop here on the floor, and that really engages teams, cross aligns teams, so that they can spot the digital opportunities that are within their business models. So we lead with advisory, but then we can be there to do the heavy lifting. So we actually help customers to design and implement and integrate those solutions, so that we're not just there to set the stage, but actually to fill it as well. Uh, and then the third thing, and I think this is really important because it connects back to what's been happening in the, in the industry around cloud, is really to, to, to enable that consumption-driven outcome. And that, that, that third piece is really the key because IT, if, 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 if cloud has taught us anything, it's that, that customers don't want to just continue to invest in capital assets, which they may or may not be able to extract value from. What they actually want is an outcome, and they want to pay for that outcome as as they consume it, right? So if they consume more of it, they pay more. If they consume less, they can start turning some of that cost base off. So those three things, advisory-led, setting the corporate strategy, which yep. is what Point Next leads on, all the way through to implementing those, those minimum viable products to get, it, get proof of value on the floor immediately, through to then turning, as you scale that out, turning that into a consumption-enabled outcome so that customers are truly paying for the outcome as they, as they consume it.